Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome to another session. Uh, this is Andrew Shreve and uh, the teaching uh, today is called Keep the Seed Alive. And you can find this written teaching if you go to my website, andrewshreve.org, click on Partner Letter, and then go to uh, February 2012. And you'll see that uh, teaching, uh, Keep the Seed Alive. So you may want to read through with that teaching as we go through this, uh, this session. Let's just pray first before we, we open the Word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you're a loving God. We thank you, Father, for your Word. We thank you that your Word is the source of truth that gives us understanding of the ways of your kingdom. Lord, so open the eyes of our understanding this day so that we can receive the knowledge of the truth which will set us free in every part of our life and give us great victory. And bring great glory to you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So in uh, Mark chapter 4 and verse 26 and 27, uh, Jesus said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. So Jesus is explaining how the kingdom of God works. So is the kingdom of God. This is how the kingdom of God works. As if a man should cast seed into the ground. So there we see that the kingdom of God works when men take action. The other scripture I want to look at is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, where Paul writes, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Again, we have this concept of planting and watering, of course, you plant in water seed. Hallelujah. So God has designed the kingdom of God to respond to the laws of seed time and harvest. God's spiritual kingdom is similar to our natural world, where life and growth comes from the planting and growing of seed. In other words, everything you, you see in life comes from seed. Even we, you and I, we come from seed, the seed of our Father. Uh, every plant, every animal comes from seed. The difference, however, between the natural and the spiritual is that life and growth in God's spiritual kingdom comes from the planting and watering of God's spiritual seeds in the human heart. And so, uh, we, in Mark chapter 4, it it shows us what the spiritual seed is. Verse 14, The sower soweth the word, sows the word. So the word of God is spiritual seed. And verse 15 says, uh, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word or the seed that was sown in their hearts. And so the ground, the spiritual ground, is the human heart. And then in verse 20 it says, These are they which are sown on good ground or have a good heart, such as hear the word or the seed and receive it and bring forth fruit 30, 60 and 100 fold. So we can see that fruitfulness in the kingdom of God comes through the receiving of the seed in the human heart. So the spiritual seeds are found in the Bible, the word of God. The specific seeds in God's word which produce God's supernatural power for everything we need for life and godliness are the promises of God. In other words, in the Bible there's many words of God. But there are specific words of God in the Bible which will produce power. Okay? Which we need for life, for healing, for finance, for every aspect of life. And those particular seeds are called the promises of God. We see this in 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verses 1 and 2 says this. It says, Whereby given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Okay, that's the, now the, the defining of what part of the word, which seed, the promises, that by these you might partake of the divine nature. And in the previous verse, it talks about knowledge and the knowledge is the promises. And it says, His divine power 
hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge. And the knowledge is the promises. So the, the knowledge of the promises brings everything we need, all things that pertain to life and godliness through the power of that seed. That seed has the power to bring everything we need for life and godliness in a multiplication of grace and peace, verse 2. So the spiritual ground is a human heart which includes the spirit and the soul. Okay, that's what the human heart is, spirit and soul. Other videos will explain that, why the human heart includes the soul and the spirit. The soul of a human includes our will, our emotions, and our imagination. It's this realm of us, our will, our emotions, and our imagination. That's all part of our soul, which is part of our heart, which is what the seed needs to, to influence or impact. The promises of God will need to impact your imagination, your will, and your emotions if you want to experience the power of those promises. Now, let's look at laws of seed. As we study the laws of seed, we will be assisted in our understanding of how to be more successful in God's kingdom. In the natural world, farmers place their faith in the ability of natural seed to produce a natural harvest. Farmers will do a lot of work clearing and preparing the ground to receive the seed. Once the ground is prepared, the farmer will carefully select good seed and plant it into that ground. The farmer will then focus on watering and protecting the seed until the seed springs and grows and becomes a strong plant. Often the farmer will build a fence around the young seedlings to prevent animals or other predators from eating or destroying the young plant. All this work is done by the farmer with the expectation of a fruitful harvest. The farmer has faith in the process of seed time and harvest. So it is in the kingdom of God. We must exercise faith in the process of seed time and harvest. We must plant spiritual seeds into our hearts and water and protect those seeds with the expectation that they will produce a harvest in our lives. A law of seed is that seed always produces after its own kind. You would never expect an apple seed to produce an orange. So in the kingdom of God, you would never expect a healing seed or promise, a healing promise of God to produce, say, for example, a finance. Right? A, a, a spiritual healing seed or promise will only ever produce healing because that's the law of seed. So you need to select what you you need to decide what you want and then plant the seed for what you want or select the seed for what you want. If you want finance, meditate financial seed. You want healing, meditate healing seed. Another law of seed is that seed must be planted and watered to produce a harvest. It would be a foolish farmer who expected a harvest without planting and watering any seed. Similarly, it would be an uninformed Christian who expected healing from God without diligently watering and planting or planting and watering healing seed or healing promises in their heart. Yet some Christians will pray extensively for the manifestation of healing or any other promise of God, but neglect the work of planting and watering God's seed promise in their heart in the area that they're wanting. In other words, many Christians will pray a lot, but they don't spend time planting and watering. So that, that's like a farmer that, that prays but doesn't work, doesn't plant the seed. We have to plant the seed. Another law of seed is seed takes time to produce the harvest. The farmer is required to wait patiently for the seed to grow and produce the harvest. In the kingdom of God, we must also wait patiently for the manifestation of the spiritual seed into this natural world. You don't, you don't plant um, a spiritual seed or meditate a spiritual seed today and expect tomorrow the manifestation into your life. After we plant the spiritual seed, we must, it says in Mark 4, 27, sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up. It takes time for the spiritual seed to take root and grow in our hearts. Hebrews 6, 12 says, Be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Well, first there's two aspects there, isn't there? Faith and patience. Firstly, we know that Romans 10, 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So faith comes when we plant and water the seed of God's word in our heart. We're meditating God's word, we're hearing God's word, so faith is going to come. Secondarily, we need to exercise patience. 
Patience is the maintaining of a faith-filled attitude whilst the seed is growing. In other words, to be patient means not giving up on the seed, but keep believing that seed is growing and producing and will bring forth the fruits of what, of what, you, what it says. The time period when patience is required can vary depending upon the seed and the condition of the heart. Some seeds grow faster than other seeds. A carrot seed will produce a carrot in a few months. A durian seed will take years to produce the durian fruit. In fertile ground, seed will also grow more quickly than in barren ground. So, Also, much water causes seed to grow more quickly. So God's promises will manifest more quickly in our lives if our hearts are fertile. In other words, they're free from sin and free from the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things. You can read that in Mark chapter 4, verse 17 to 19. God's promises will also manifest more quickly if we water the seed daily through meditation. And meditation you can see in Psalm 1, verse 2 and Joshua 1, verse 8. So meditation is is to, to focus on the seed, to meditate the Word of God, to speak the Word of God out loud over and over and over again. Imagine receiving that Word. Study the context of that Word. So that but process of meditation is like watering the seed and that will cause the seed to grow more quickly. And if our heart is free from all those sins and cares and worries, then that's also going to allow the seed to, to grow more quickly in our hearts and we'll get the, the fruit more quickly. Once we plant a seed or promise of God in our heart, it is important that we keep the seed alive. Don't give up on it. Don't forget about it. The devil will actively try and steal the seed from our hearts or at least try and thwart its growth by enticing us to sin or to be distracted away from the watering and, and protecting of that seed. You can see that in Mark chapter 4, verse 15 to 19. So the, there's spiritual warfare involved. The devil's going to come and try to stop you getting victory. He doesn't want you to get victory in the Word of God, to get real tangible results in the Word of God. He doesn't want that because then you're going to get more in, loving, more, more in love with God, more into the Word, and you're going to have more power and more revelation to, to, to destroy what the devil has been doing in the earth. So we, we need to keep the seed alive. We keep the seed alive and we keep it alive and continue to exercise faith and patience through daily meditation. Meditation continues the practice of audible confession of the seed, study of the seed. Imagining ourselves in possession of the fruit of what the seed is promising. If you're meditating healing seed, imagine your body healed. If you're meditating prosperity seed, imagine you having no want, no lack, your cup running over. In fact, spiritual war warfare is centered around our thoughts and imagination concerning God's seed and promises. The reference there is 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 5. And I'll just read that, that there because so often people don't realize where spiritual warfare is really centered around, but it's centered around meditation. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So the context here is spiritual warfare. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, this is, what, this is what it talks about with spiritual warfare. Casting down imaginations. There it is. That meditation is using our imagination on the Word of God. We are to cast down, cast down ungodly imaginations and put God's promises as our imagination. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is the area of spiritual warfare. And this is the area the devil is going to try to stop you. Imagining the promises of God in your life, imagining God's prosperity, imagining God's healing, imagining being free from sin, imagining the peace of God, imagining the shalom blessing of God in your life. Hallelujah. Keep the seed alive. Engage in spiritual warfare. Pray with me. Dear Father God, thank you for the understanding that your kingdom operates through the planting and watering of your spiritual seed or your promises. Thank you that I will inherit your promises through faith and patience. Please open the eyes of my understanding more fully concerning the process of seed time and harvest. Please strengthen me to diligently meditate your word on a daily basis to keep your seed promises alive in my heart. I know that if I faithfully plant and water your seed through meditation, your seed will produce 
your harvest and I will receive the fruitful blessings and the success of your kingdom. Father, I pray for your people. Let your anointing right now come upon them. I break over your life every oppression, every evil spirit that wants to bind you. I command you, loose God's people right now. Loose off them. You cannot be on them. And I declare you are free and liberated to meditate the word of God and to receive the seed of the word into your heart, to keep the seed alive. Strengthen them, Lord. Let an impartation come into them right now. Strengthen them to, to do this process, to keep the seed alive so that your seed will produce the fruit and the blessing into their life. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.